So I'm starting without any massage medium. I'm starting with my hands dry. I'm having her take some breaths, but everything has intention. Not only am I getting her to relax, but I'm feeling her tightness. I'm feeling where maybe there's some resistance in the movements that I'm doing. And I'm pushing down towards her feet. I'm not pushing her down into the table. I'm pushing down towards the feet. Remember that fatigue This movement is already starting that stretching process. Like to call this a cat paw movement, I'm gonna move to the shoulders. Important things to look at. She's quite a bit more tight over here on her right side. So you'll notice when I'm pushing the shoulder down that the head's turning a little bit. So not only does the massage feel good, but you're able to kind of see where there's some tension and pressure points. I like to have dry hands for this part of it because I'm trying to kind of get her to stretch a little bit. And you'll notice um, that we're going to do some movements up in the scalp as well. Not everybody wants any kind of massage medium in their scalp. So this is your opportunity to really work on them without getting the oil in there, right? It's taking, it's taking that intention and then that, that thoughtfulness. Remember the move I told you that you were going to wish you were able to see underneath? I'm pressing right into her back. And you can see when I lift up, do you see how it opens up her neck and her chest? We got it. We're, we're warming everything up so that everything we're working on in the face has somewhere to go. Gently pulling traction towards me. And I'm going to turn her head to the side a little bit because I want you to see how to massage the scalp. Now, you're more than welcome to get in there and get crazy. I feel like this is more like itching the scalp. But if you touch the tissues, right? So if you go like this, you're gonna get your hair messed up. Um, or you can press a little firmer, you can make contact with that skin, and you can move in a circular motion. And see how that's much different? Like you can see when I'm working on my scalp back here and pulling that, I'm actually manipulating the tissues up front. So it's not just about like scratching the surface, it's about making contact with the tissue and moving the tissue. All of the muscles in the forehead and the scalp, they're like paper thin. And so that's how you're actually going to stimulate them. You're gonna get that blood flow going. We're naturally releasing some serotonin at this point. So we have some of the body chemicals helping us with this relaxation part. Turning to the side a little bit, just so you can see. See the difference of when you're actually touching the tissues and getting that to move? And I'm gonna perform a stretch by pulling that back. Everybody can do it in here. You can put your head or your hand on the top of your head and you can pull back slightly. Do you feel that movement, right? It's just a little bit of movement, but think about everything that that's, that's changing and causing to relax a little bit. So even just taking that, pressing it a little bit towards the table, we're stretching the muscles up front, and then we're doing it on the side as well. This is where you're gonna get your massage medium. You're gonna get in there. Like I said, I love our massage butter. It's a rice bran oil base. It's probably my favorite massage medium I've ever worked with. It says butter, but it's an oil, but it's an oil that feels like you're working with like a rich butter on the skin, um, allowing you to manipulate those tissues. I like to, like I said, have a little bit less. I go in and I apply the oil, and then if I have too much on my hands, I'll wipe it on the top of their arms, and I have a little stash for later that I need to go back instead of reaching for more. And then you'll probably use it anyway to massage arms. So turning everything into, I'm not just applying this oil, but I'm thinking about how I'm doing it. I'm slowly working my way up, and then coming back down. I mean, you're not just watching this. It was a while ago that we, we recorded this. So for the trapezius release, remember the trap, the diamond that I was mentioning in the back? We're gonna be using that petrosage and we're gonna be essentially grabbing those top part of the trapezius and we're gently gripping it and pulling it towards us. Now you're gonna have people that will come in and it will feel really tight and you might see them tense up a little bit and that would be where I would just relax a little bit from that point. But you want to you want to actually grab the tissues. Can you see the difference there that we're actually grabbing that muscle? Now that we've grabbed and stimulated that muscle, we're going to make sure that we're kind of 
letting it stretch out a little bit. Anytime you do an intense movement, we're gonna have another move that follows that I like to call smoothing it out, or kind of like an I'm sorry stroke. So if they were a little tense when you were doing the trap work, going in and doing something like this, they're gonna melt. All I'm doing is going up on one side and down on the other, and starting to get the head to turn a little bit to get that movement. Now, she was a little bit tight, and so I was just trying to give her a little bit of extra attention right here, and I had my size mixed up. It was her left side that was a little bit tighter. Um, so I'm kind of feeling this out and getting a little bit of movement before I go into the next move, because see how this is a stretch? where we're pulling on one side, or pushing on one side, and pulling up on the other. She was a little tight there, so I needed to kind of get that warmed up before I did something where I was drastically gonna kind of turn her head to the side. But you can see, after we're done with this move, already we haven't even gotten to the face yet, and everything is more open in the neck, and open in the chest, we have to start there. Now, I've heard from people that sometimes they're like, I don't know if I'm gonna have enough time to do a full facial massage like this. So maybe try to get those cat paw movements, get those shoulders relaxed. Maybe you're doing that while they're under an enzyme or you're cleansing the skin. You can start with those moves early on. That way when you go into the facial massage, you're prepared for this. So now that she's warmed up, we can go into that lifting movement. Again, that batisma. We're giving that batisma a lot of work because it's the thing that holds everything down. So really working to open that up. Be mindful when you go over the throat. And this is a great time to start to feel if there's any kind of congestion happening, happening in the neck area. You're going to notice every move is going to end to get you into the next move. I like to think of facial massage as a dance on the skin. Right? We don't have to break contact. We can just keep working. This is the pet massage or the ringing movement um, friction. The, this was this, right? But I'm doing it with my thumb. And you'll see how the skin kind of makes an S in the center. That's getting all those tissues going up. The chin often gets neglected, but think about what it's supporting our mouth, right? We do so much talking and expressing in our mouth area. We really want to get this whole muscle, it's a circular muscle around the mouth. We really want to get it open and relaxed. You can go around the lips like in that last part, and that's really going to help kind of the lips be a little bit more defined. Because if you think if the muscle's tight, we're pursing, but if you loosen that muscle, the smile's allowed to happen and everything's more open. So now we're going to be working along the jaw with some petrosage movements. And we're actually grabbing the tissue. Can you see that the tissue's being manipulated there? We're not just sliding over it. This is a great way to tone that jaw, right? It's going to look much more prominent after because we're also stimulating the lymphatic system, getting some fluid out of there. And you can get creative by, at this point, I stood up. And now I'm working over to the masseter to strip that out. So what I'm doing is I'm just working towards the ear. Now my thumbs are double jointed, so I wouldn't normally be extending my thumbs that way, but that's how my thumbs work. <laughs> Yours might be a little bit straighter and much make a much prettier massage video. But don't underestimate how much pressure you can put right there. I'm standing and I'm leaning into that movement giving it a lot of extra love. And then, since it was a little bit more of an intense move, here we're, we're working to now release that tissue, right? Release any of that lactic acid that we broke up from the masseter. And all it is, it's a rolling movement where you're pulling the skin in over your thumb. This is why you want to make sure your nails are short. You don't want anybody, you don't want to go over a sharp part during this. And you can get creative. You can follow that line like we're showing. But you can bring it up and really focus on those smile lines as well. Get those muscles broken up. Right? The muscles get used to using the same expression over and over again. We're introducing blood flow and we're allowing them to relax. This is going to be, I'm going slow so that you can see how my hands are moving. And the point is, is to lift the tissue. You see how her tissue or her cheek is lifted there? And you want to do it fast, but I was going slow so that you can see it. But you want, when you're doing the tapping movement, I call this as a slapping within the tapping movement, 
your, your point is to be able to keep that tissue lifted and elevated so that when you go into this next movement, you have a good amount of tissue here. And I call this the full circle half moon because I'm going the full circle around. But the point of this move is the pinch that's happening right there, right where the tissue is up here above that masseter, that tense muscle. Now we're working on the cheeks. This is really going to tone and define the cheek area. Guess what else we're doing? We're getting somewhere for the fluid that's around the eye area to go. We need to really warm up those muscles, get any excess fluid out of there so that when we go into our eye massage later, it has somewhere to go. That's what I'm explaining there. My hands are matching warm up pet massage or ringing here. And then we're lifting on the way out. And you'll see when her head turns slightly, you'll see that that left side, your right, but her left side, you're about to see when we turn the head here. I should have held it a little bit longer. But there's a big difference. Everything's more defined in the cheeks. Her jawline's more defined. Um, you'll notice when you kind of work on one side. So the way I develop this massage is that you'll work on one side first, and now we're repeating all those movements on the other side to get ready to do simultaneous movements when we get up to the eye area. I think sometimes as uh, providers, we get so stuck in making sure both our hands are doing the same thing at once. And when we're doing that, it's kind of diluting what those movements are able to do, right? You've got one hand working for you instead of two. So don't be afraid to get up, use both hands, go to one side of the table. We wouldn't be able to do this one-handed, one-handed on each side. So it's okay, work on one side, work on the other. What your client's also gonna notice that they're even still awake at this point, is they're gonna be able to feel a difference in their face before you even move to the other side. So we essentially repeat the same pattern on this side. Can you see where you can make this longer or shorter, right? You can slow it down, you can speed it up, you can put in your favorite moves. But what I want you to think about when you're putting your favorite moves in, think about where you're doing it. So if you have a really, really amazing eye movement, plug it into wherever you do the eye movement here. Use this one, add yours, do just yours. But think about opening everything up down below, working your way up, and then working back down. Turning the head to the side just so you can see this pinching movement because I think a lot of times we see videos, massage videos, that kind of hypnotize us because they look so relaxing, right? But it's important that you're getting the point across of the movement you're doing. So when we get these, when we smile, we have muscles that run up the side that are pulling our smile up here. So if you want to relax the smile line without not letting people smile anymore, you want to pay close attention to up here. That's why that pinchy movement was so important. So now we're just introducing our client that we're going into the eye area. A couple quick eye circles. You don't want anybody clenching. It can be a sensitive area. Not everybody's work to have, used to having work around their eye area. Um, but there is a strip that goes over the nose right here. Um, they can pull tension in those body marks that we make. And so we're really working on loosening the side of that muscle. Now, if someone has sinus pressure, check in, make sure they're comfortable when you're doing this. But we're just stripping out that nose area, and we're allowed to work a little deeper there because we did those couple circles around the eye area to let them know we're working in that area. Now that we've warmed it up, you can perform a little stretch. It doesn't look like a lot's happening on the table, but we're now stretching our corrugators and that nasal strip that is going over. We want to open everything up in the eye area, just like the mouth, it's a circular muscle. And we want to open everything up, right? If we're squinched, everything's a little, our fine lines are a little more noticeable. If everything's open, everything's going to look a little bit more relaxed and useful and smooth. So we're going to flush out some fluid. We're going to go a gentle movement in, and then we're going to add our middle finger and gently push out. So it's kind of like you're like massaging that movement out. Gently in with your ring finger, adding your second finger and pulling. Sure, you could go right in with that movement and probably get great results, but you can do, if you work the bottom of the face first and then you do that movement, 
it's not going to be as much effort on your part. Oh, who doesn't love that? So the 11s that we get, right, those are our coordinators we're frowning in. You want to really grab them. You're almost digging your finger up into the little area above your brow, or uh, right at the center of your brow, and you're pinching those muscles. So you're working them. You're getting them to relax so you're not getting those heavy frown lines. And then we're going to flush it out with multiple fingers. So again, intensive movement, followed by a movement that's gonna help flush everything out and smooth everything out. Kind of that, I'm sorry. You know when you work out and you have your sore the next day, that's lactic acid buildup? Um, we're kind of working the face out. So we want to do those movements where we're working the face out and then the movements that come in and, and make it feel good after. Again, stepping to the side of the table, we're now focusing on the crow's feet. So the main part of this move is to open up where you would normally have crow's feet, flush the fluid, and then I just call this a transition stroke, but there's a benefit to it. You're doing some lifting movements. I like to try and make sure I'm maintaining contact before I go and work the other eye. This is another one of those movements. You need both hands to get the full effect of that move. So it's okay to do one side to the other. They're not even gonna notice. If you're maintaining contact and moving to that other side, they're not even gonna feel that part. They're just gonna know that one side feels relaxed and now the other side feels relaxed. The same pinching movements, the petrissage, making the S movements that we did on the chin, we're now doing on the forehead. But because of the work before, where we stretched the neck up, we worked the shoulders, because of all that work, now this is done in an easy way. We're gonna flush everything out. So starting at the center, going right above the brow, starting at the center again, going mid forehead, starting at the center again, going to the top. Now this is where you start to flush everything back down. I like to stand at the side of the table and use my full hands going in. If you're more comfortable sitting at the base and then doing it towards you, you can do that as well. But this feels absolutely amazing. For video purposes, I just do this once. In reality, I'm doing each one of these movements three times, but I'm starting at the top and then working